Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about recovery. Recovery. Okay, let's go. Recovery is an antidote. It is water soluble and is known as a rescue agent. It is a chemotherapy modulating agent. Recovering could be rival recovering or literally recovering depending on the brand that is available at your jurisdiction. It could come in form of injection as 3 mg per mil, 15 mg per 5 mil, or 10 mg per mil. And it could be in form of tablets as 5 mg or 15 mg. Uses. We use the covering as water soluble rescue agent. As chemotherapy modulating agent, it is a vitamin B9, also known as folinic acid. It is an antidote to metotrexate, also an antidote to pyrimetamine. The covering with 5 fluorouracil is pretty good in treatment of colorectal carcinoma. It is also used in treating folate deficiency in megaloblastic anemia, but not in vitamin B12 deficiency. We use this also in methanol poisoning. It is also useful in methotrexate rescue or when we are faced with metotrexate over exposure or over dosage. Also useful in non-Hodgkin lymphoma, pancreatic carcinoma, and HIV to prevent pyrimetamine hematological toxicity. Also useful in primary strengthened nervous system lymphoma, also in tuber ectopy pregnancy, and non leukemic meningeal carcinoma. Also helpful in methanol toxicity, and like I've just said a few minutes ago, in megaloblastic anemia with folate deficiency. And of course, in folate deficiency and hepatobiliary cancers, also helpful when it comes to graft versus host disease. Still on uses in gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, gastric cancer, in septra usage for a long period of time because septra is a combination of sovametosazole and trimetoprene. In ozovagia cancer, dermatomyositis, polymyositis, colorectal carcinoma, like I've just said when combined with 5 fluorouracil in blander carcinoma and acute lymphocytic leukemia. Dose per order of recovering greater than 25 mg is not required. I repeat, if you are using recovering per order, any dose greater than 25 mg is not necessary. And someone should ask me why that because absorption is pretty great, it's saturable. Recovering calcium is a substrate for glucapides. Glucapides is an enzyme that inactivates metotrexate and it does that rapidly after injection. So you have any situation like cancer or ectopic pregnancy, on account of which you have to use metotrexate for any reason you want to use metotrexate, just get recovering nearby. You're fine. Recovering calcium two hours before or after glucapides. In other words, we don't give glucapides and recovering together. It's either you give recovering calcium two hours before or two hours after administration of glucapides. Please, no intrateca administration. In ALR, you can give 
recovering intravenously, 50 mg 12 hours after completing metotrexate. Then you can repeat 50 mg 6 hourly for 8 doses. You may, you may continue until metotrexate level is less than 0 0.1 micromolar. You can titrate recovering dosage based on metotrexate level. So in other words, you will be you know, continuously measuring the value of metotrexate. And you use the value of metotrexate to determine whether or not you have to stop recovering administration. In bladder carcinoma, you can give recovering intravenously or per aura. 15 mg every 6 hours times 4 doses on days 2 and 9. Okay? Then you start after 24 hours of metotrexate administration. Also in combination with other cytotoxic agents. That is in bladder carcinoma. In colorectal carcinoma, you can give it intravenously as 200 mg per meter square per day, given over more than three minutes or five days. You can give the above every four weeks for two cycles. Then you give it every four to five weeks in combination with five fluorouracil. In dermatomyositis or polymyositis, you could give it 5 mg per aura once per week. And you can administer 8 to 12 hours after the metotrexate administration. In megaloblastic anemia with folate deficiency, you can give leucoprene. I am or IV at a dose of 0 0.5 to 1 milligram once daily. In metnotoxicity, you can give it intravenously as 1 milligram per kilogram over 30 to 60 minutes. And you repeat every 4 to 6 hours until the metanol is completely cleared. In metotrexate rescue, you can give it either per aura, IM, or intravenously. 15 mg from 24 hours after the onset of metotrexate infusion. And you continue every 6 hours for 10 doses until metotrexate level is less than 0 0.05 micromolar. You have to monitor hydration and the electrolytes. And of course, urine alkalization is necessary. In metrotrexate overdose, you can give 10 mg per meter square every 6 hours until metrotrexate level is less than 0 0.01 micromolar. You can increase the liquid dose to 50 or 100 mg per meter square if there is no renal impairment. And continue that until metotrexate level is less than 0 0.01 micromolar. In HIV, if the patient is on pyrimetomy, it will be appropriate to have recuperin 10 to 25 mg once daily with the pyrimetomy. And in prevention or prophylaxis, of pneumocystic gyrovesic pneumonia, you can use 25 mg once weekly. Remember, we used to call pneumocystic gyrovesic pneumonia as pneumocystic carine. In combination with dapsone and pyrimetomy, in other words, in HIV patient, on pyrimetomy, 
give leucoprene 10 to 25 mg once daily with pyrimetamine. And in prophylaxis of pneumocystis juvesi pneumonia, give 25 mg once weekly in combination with dapsone and pyrimetamine. In pediatric age groups, I would advise you consult the pediatrician and pharmacist. Adverse reactions. Fatigue, alopecia, and gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Angular stomatitis, constipation, and of course, anaphylaxis. What are the possible contraindications? No leucoverin in megaloblastic anemia, secondary to vitamin B12 deficiency. Remember, I said you could use leucoverin in the face of megaloblastic anemia, but not with vitamin B12 deficiency. Only if it is secondary to folate deficiency. It is contraindicated when there is hypersensitivity to recovering or any component of the formulation. And another contraindication is intratecal root. No, it's not given by intratecal root. Warnings. I like encouraging more than warnings, but for the sake of the safety of the people who will be treating, we need to be cautious. In the face of hypersensitivity, let's be careful. We can run into big trouble. There's likelihood of seizures or syncope with recovering administration. And remember, not in the face of B12 deficiency. Not in renal impairment because it is excreted renally. Drug drug interaction. Please contact the pharmacist. They will be able to give you the list, or at least you tell them the exact medication you want to use at the same time. So they'll be able to guide against or for the usage. Glucabides has the capability to decrease the concentration of recovering calcium. Therefore, give a space of two hours before or after administration of either. In other words, don't give glucapidase at the same time with recovering. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Kindly remember to share and subscribe. And there are a lot more on my channel. I appreciate it.